The Walter Sobolev Center will be a signature building in the capital and the heartbeat of this community, a building whose purpose will be for the benefit of all. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? The voices of our ancestors are ringing over this earth this very moment. The long road to reach the construction phase of the Walter Sobolov Center ended with a groundbreaking for the new building. Flag. By the end of the year, the profile of the center had taken shape, and Juno's world-class educational facility for the Clinket, Haida, and Simshian, and the general public, was on schedule for completion by 2015. You're going to have space to probably do four headbands off of your remaining hide. Even after the new center will yes. house SHI's programs, yeah. including its sustainable art program, which teaches how to make art using sustainable materials such as sea otter and seal furs. In 2013, SHI offered seven skin sewing workshops to 152 students in six communities across southeast Alaska. That looks gorgeous! The Institute's goals are to teach people this ancient art form and to create a cottage industry. Students first learn to hand sew, then graduate to SHI's workshops on how to use skin sewing machines. <laughs> Jeremiah James of Yakutat participated in the workshop and was stunned to learn that he could make fur hats 10 times faster than he could sewing them by hand. It's amazing, really, that it just, it was just seemed so much easier and so much smoother than, and uh, the time, you know, is just, just a fraction of what it is by hand. Uh, so hopefully by the end of today, we'll be able to have discussions on things like this. In 2013, SHI also continued to offer form line workshops across the region. The goal of the program is to revitalize formline design in southeast Alaska and to show artists how to teach formline to others. We have a lot of great artists in southeast Alaska, but not all of them have the technical skills for teaching. And it's really important that we give these skills to the artists that we could provide the, the training to our youth. In 2013, SHI sponsored 10 classes for 252 students in 10 communities. Through a partnership with Clinket Haida Regional Housing Authority, SHI hired brothers Joe and TJ Young from Heidelberg to create eagle and raven totem poles and a screen for Juno's Gaja Hit building in Indian Village. They'll replace pieces at the site that have deteriorated. The Young Brothers finished carving the raven pole in 2013 and will work with apprentices to complete the project in 2014. How many spokes do you cut? Nineteen. Ten. Ten. Ten spokes, 19 inches long. In 2013, SHI launched a major project to increase interest in academic achievement in math for middle school students. The program includes culture camps where native art practices such as basketry are used to teach math. SHI is building a model for use in southeast Alaska by adapting nationally recognized math programs such as North Carolina's Math in a Basket. How long are the spokes going to be? 19. 19 inches. What Math in a Basket allows you to do is go from abstract just numbers to really seeing the math. And you put your hands on the math. And when that happens, I think kids, it really does something for kids. They get it. This piece here, is, we had a, a war helmet you've seen out there. This one is actually made out of a spruce burl. SHI in 2013 also continued to offer cultural orientations for high school and university teachers. And last year, more than 940 students and teachers participated in this program. 
SHI also offered its annual Schletzin Leadership Academy for 48 high school students across the region and its annual Schletzin Hoop Camp to 30 students in Wrangell. We also had to speak about the boarding school experience and all of the havoc that that era wreaked. In 2013, the Institute sponsored its annual lecture series featuring five speakers. The theme last year was spirituality. The state courts, in, in at least two different cases, have recognized the existence of native spirituality associated with subsistence practices. However, I think as a society, we still have a lot to learn about native religion, native spirituality. Approximately 150 people attended the lectures, and in 2013, another 370 people watched the videos online. The Institute also continued to build its archives and ethnographic collections. One significant photo acquired in 2013 was taken in 1868 by Edward Muybridge, thought to be the first person to ever photograph Southeast Alaska natives. SHI acquired some stunning ethnographic pieces, including a killer whale bracelet made by the late Amos Wallace and an old Haida hat, which was donated to SHI by former Alaskan Monica Wyatt. The Institute digitized several recordings and put them online. Materials include recordings by Austin Hammond, Clarence Jackson, and Bessie Denny. In 2013, SHI raised $8.4 million in grants, revenues, and sales, supplementing Sea Alaska's contribution and in-kind services of $1.6 million to support SHI operations and programs. SHI's program served a total of more than 5,500 people. This video shows only a few highlights of programs in 2013. To learn more about Sea Alaska Heritage Institute, see sealaskaheritage.org.